everyone george here the disney family man welcome back for the final segment of this lengthy conversation i'm having with orange grove 55 and yes you're probably going to wonder after this i am definitely changing my shirt i promise you folks, <laughs> next video, i will be in another shirt so uh let's get to it this one i saved i didn't really want to call this the the best for last but i think this is more of the interesting one for last because this came out out of nowhere surprised us but at the same time i'm glad that disney gave us some answers as to what is possibly going on with with disneyland and, and the state of disneyland right now currently it is still shut down since march of 2020 it's going to definitely surpass a year the longest it's ever been closed um and not everyone knew what was going on. When is the parks going to reopen? You know, how are they doing this with the annual passes? You know, are they refunding people? Are they going to extend their passes? How are they doing this? Well, Disney and myself included, because I'm a premier passport holder for Walt Disney World and Disneyland, I received an email stating that uh, the Walt Disney Company for Disney, the Disneyland Resort is sunsetting the disneyland sunsetting <laughs> the, <laughs> the disneyland annual pass system and it didn't really surprise me i think that's the best way i think disney has to take it is pretty much shutting the system down hitting reset and starting over i think that's the best way to do it but i do also want to uh, talk about something within uh, the letter that Disney had sent. And I think it's very funny that they're not just ending the annual passes, that they're going to continue with a new product, but it's not called a pass. It's, it's called a membership. Yeah. And it came up several times. And I'm thinking what this reminded me of is what D D23 does, because with D23, they call it a membership. And they have certain levels that if you want the gold family, or if you just want the gold, if you want the silver, you know, and I think depending on which, which bundle you buy of the membership of D23, that that's what depicts of what you get. You get the, the quarterly D23 magazine, you get to go to um, all of the events and the panels and the D23 expo. Um, and it, it, you get the free gift each year when you renew your membership. And that just made me wonder that because they call it a membership, is that the way it's going to go, but park style? And so uh, what, do you, what do you think? What's your take on it? Well, no, I, I think, th th you know, you were very right in pointing that out. I, I did a video too, I, a few days ago, I pointed this out where, you know, um, the language in the, in this press release was very calculated. You know, these press releases are not that they don't misspeak or it's not an accident. So when they, when, when, when the president of Disneyland was talking about the annual pass holder program, it was always in reference to the current program that they're canceling. And he, and he specifically calls it an annual pass, an annual pass, an annual pass. He says it many times, but whenever he refers to the new thing that they're starting, he refers to it as a membership. He says it like two or three times, this new membership program, membership program, membership program. So the wording matters. So I think that what this might mean is that it's not gonna be an annual pass anymore where you pay by the year. It might be more like your cell phone bill or a gym membership where, or the, you know, where you're basically, you pay a month to month premium or whatever, you know, and it continues as long as you pay your month to month. So if you're paying, you know, 50 bucks a month, as long as you keep paying 50 bucks a month, you still have your pass. If you stop paying it, you default, but you no longer have your pass. So I think we might go in that direction and they'll offer you like uh, maybe three or four different tiers, you know, a low tier, mid tier, high tier, whatever. And depending on what tier you are, you'll get more days of the year to go you know, it's going to be reservation based. So we can all kind of assume that, you know, um, so maybe with the cheaper pass, you only have like 10 days a year or whatever calendar year you can reserve maybe with the mid 
tier pass. You can do like, you know, 55 days a year. But basically would, where you could still have the block out dates, but they, like if you do the highest tier, sort of mm -hmm. like with the premier passport, you would have no block out dates. You could pick whatever date you want. Yeah, they might have a pass like that too, where they, you can you can do any date. You know, I'm sure that one though, if they do that one in this current state of the pandemic, it'll be very expensive because yeah. they want to discourage, I think, people from I think if they do an unlimited pass, it's gonna be like extremely expensive. They really want a barrier to entry for that because but they're trying. But do you yeah. think that would even be worth doing a pass membership like that? Because if that would be the case wouldn't you just buy the number of days of a regular base ticket when you want to go? But then again, that's different for you because you're a local to a Disney resort. You right. know, so that would work for you. But I'm wondering like for people who had, who have annual passes now, but that travel, I wonder if it's not really worth it if they were to just say, Hey, this is when we're doing our vacation. I'll just buy a regular base ticket for the number yeah. of days that we're going. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm actually on the fence with this, like, because I've always had the highest pass. I've been a pass holder since 2002. And I've always bought the highest pass because I just like the flexibility of just going whenever I want. Mm -hmm. But with this new system, if the bulk of the passes are going to be reservation based, and if they have an unlimited access pass, it's going to be like $3,000 or some insane amount of money. I probably won't get that one. I'll probably get the one where I can just reserve, you know, an, a certain amount of days a year. I only really, whenever, when I had my annual pass, I averaged about one day a month going to the parks. So it, I figure if I can get a, a pass where I can reserve maybe 12 to 15 days a year, I'm good. I'm just as good as I was before. Now, now when you, you know? say that, does that mean that you could still choose which month you want as long as it adds up to those days or they would actually have you blocked out to say, okay, well, you have October, May, and December. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would hope they would let you choose the month, but they might, yeah, you're right. They might go in and say, hey, in the month of December, that's a busy month for the resort. You're blocked out all of December. You're blocked out all of June. That's another busy month, you know? Yeah. There might be certain months that are completely- I mean, I really out. hope that it's not that. I hope that you could still pick a month because with me, I'm one that I do plan my Disney vacations, but a lot of times they come through even more when I sporadically just book a trip. Right. Like I don't, I don't, sometimes I don't plan two or three years ahead of time. Like there could be some time where it's like, oh, I got this time off. You know what? I think I'm going to book a trip. You know, yeah. so I hope that if I was able to get a pass like that, I could still have that flexibility, still pay it a month but still have my options to say, hey, I want to go during this time. I'll make reservations. You know, I could still go. Like, I hope it's not where you're paying an arm and a leg, but you're very restricted on how and when to go. Yeah, yeah. And that's the one thing I loved about having an annual pass. I'm not, I'm not really like, I mean, I like to plan ahead but I don't like to overdo it either. Like, I feel like the thing I love about it is I, I like the fact that I can be, I can wake up and be like, Hey, you know what? I don't have work today. Why don't we go to Disney? Yeah, let's go to Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I like that. I don't want to always have to like two weeks in advance, say this Saturday, February 21st, I'm, we're going to go, you know, I want to be able to have that spontaneity a little bit where I can just say, Hey, you know what? we all have the day off today. Why don't we go? Why don't we head over to Disney? You know, I'm going to miss that because I think that's going to be a casualty of this new program. I really think that they were going to, I really think they're going to kill that. I, I mean, I, I really, they might have an unlimited access pass. Like you mentioned, I really doubt it though, at least for the foreseeable future. I just think it's going to be all these reservation based programs. Well, that you'll and, choose and Josh from. Amaro actually I believe he announced it without officially announcing it is that the reservations are going to be here for the long haul. Yep. And I called. think that that alone is going to hurt the new type of membership, because again, you have to then reserve a day. And I think it's going to be worse for Disneyland than Walt Disney world, because with Walt Disney world that you still have more of an open chance of getting the reservation you want, if you're staying on property. 
if you stay on property at a Disney World Resort hotel, you could pretty much get any pick day that you want. Whereas with Disneyland, a lot of locals just go for the day. They don't stay on property, uh, more so because their hotels are very, very expensive. And with yeah. being and with being a local, you know, there's really no reason to stay on property. You go for the day. So I think Disneyland has more of a challenge with that. And it makes me wonder if that particular membership is only going to be for Disneyland alone. Or do you think that will also apply to Walt Disney World as well in the future? Because I just uh, renewed my annual pass for Walt Disney World. It, it allowed me to renew just cool. my pass for Walt Disney World, <laughs> but nothing for Disneyland. I think I think if it's if it's like this roaring success in California, like people love it and it's, it's a great system and it's working out and they can they can control the flow and Disney loves it and the guests love it, then yeah, I can definitely see it coming to Florida. Absolutely, you know. Um, but another thing that I am worried about though, when when Disneyland was supposed to open back on July seventeenth, I actually made hotel reservations at the Grand Californian for the following September, right? Okay. Now, during that process, though, the cast member at the hotel, when I made my reservations for two days at the Grand Cali, they told me that, that my hotel reservations are locked in. I'm good to go, right? Right. But that doesn't mean that you're, you, that you're guaranteed into the parks. You still have to go on to the website when the parks open again, officially, and like reserve those days to go into the parks because you have to make a park reservation now right see that's a pain in the butt it it I, like you said with florida when you have the reservations you're guaranteed a spot in the parks i hope the two are tied at california i mean at uh yeah at california resort as well where you know what if you're making hotel reservations at the grand cali or the disneyland hotel you automatically should get the park reservations i don't want to have to like coordinate two separate reservations you know what i'm saying it, it yeah. just seems like it's well, sort of like well with this you still have to make the reservation for the park right you okay. have the hotel but you have where it's like where you're more guaranteed to have the open spot rather than you just being a person saying oh let me see what is available for today oh hollywood studios blocked out for today well i'll just go to epcot for the day because it's open so have you ever had an issue where you got the hotel room, but then you couldn't get the, the park you wanted? I, I've, I've been able to get every park that I want because I had the hotel res reservation. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, I hope it's like that here. I hope it's like that. If you stay at the hotel, you're guaranteed a spot. Because otherwise, it's like trying to match these up where, oh, I got the hotel room. Oh, but man, only one of the three days I can get into the park. It's, it's yeah, yeah, that's going to be a problem if they yeah. have, you know. And if that is a problem that's what makes me wonder if that's just going to be a Disneyland thing and not Walt Disney World because it seems like with the annual passes it's working for Walt Disney World because in a sense they're it's a bigger resort they're opened where I think with Disneyland it's more relied on their locals and now with a membership type thing it just makes me wonder how it's going to play out as far as being a local rather than just a person coming in for a vacation right yeah it's gonna it's gonna be very very interesting to see and the demand is gonna be freaking through the roof when they finally open this place up i mean can you imagine the demand for disneyland once they reopen and that's how you know there there's automatically as part of that membership you're going to have to have some sort of block out dates because yeah. everyone and their grandmother the second that day the second the gates open again boom it, you're going to have shoulder to shoulder yeah it's gonna be absolutely it's gonna be absolutely nuts that's gonna be the stressful part you know i wonder um, if it's going to be where whoever had the highest tier annual pass gets first shot at the membership and then the next tier done i wonder if that's how they're going to integrate people to pick their days to go in yeah that it probably will be yeah they, they have to figure that out somehow they probably will be though if you're paying more you should get first dibs i mean it's only fair I know it sounds terrible. I know it's it's kind of gro kind of gross feeling, <laughs> but it but it, I mean there's no other way to do it. You know, I mean if you're well, yeah, paying, if they let everyone do it at once, everyone's going to pick that first day back. You right. Know? And, it's, and I really don't think it's going to matter whether it's Disneyland or Disney California Adventure. No, I, I think I think just for the California locals, whatever park they can get in, they're going to go. 
Yeah, they're going to go. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm hopeful, though. I'm really hopeful for this new membership thing they're starting, because I think that this, even before the pandemic, is something that we really needed here in California. The annual pass system out here, at least, wasn't working. It was, we have so many pass holders and it's flooding our parks. You can barely move half the time. We hit capacity constantly out here. It was time to really reinvent or reimagine the pass program. And this is really the perfect time to do that because no one's allowed to go anyway. Everyone's passes are gonna expire. This is the perfect time to really go in there and like, hey, let's take a step back. Let's relook at the program. Let's reimagine it, fix it. So when everyone comes back, it's fresh, you know? Uh, Florida is a little different because you guys don't have that local annual pass base like we do. So it's not it's not as much of a necessity, and, you and know? Again, and even if we did, we have four theme parks. We right. have two water parks. We have Disney Springs. We have how many different hotels that people can go off and have dinner. And like, you can scatter more at Walt Disney World. Where at Disneyland, you're more compacted into right whatever they have right exactly exactly so yeah i'm, I'm very curious what they're going to do with it i i'm i'm waiting for my for my refund they're going to send us a refund for the disneyland annual passes so that's basically a sen essentially like a third stimulus check because <laughs> yeah. it's going to be about the same well it'll be way more than actually a stimulus it's going to be like for a signature flush, you're going to make like $1,400 or so, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy, you know, I mean, they're, yeah. they're so expensive, yeah, I'm, but... I'll still actually get a refund for the last part for my pass as well, because, Good. because with my premier passport, I was still able to do Walt Disney World, but I couldn't do Disneyland. So from the time of the closure up until when my pass expired, I probably won't get the full amount that I paid for Disneyland. Um, but I should get about maybe half the year or so. That's cool. That I didn't use. So, I, I mean, it was, I, I wasn't using it anyway because of the parts being shut down. So I'll take a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the money back and I'm just going to actually save it. I'm going to, whatever I get from them, I'm going to save it. And then I'll save it for whatever new membership they announce. I'll put it towards the new membership, you yeah. know, later on down the road. Um, if I have that kind of self-control though, we'll see. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I have the premier passport. So even though I'm in East, coast local um opposite than the west coast that i have the highest tier pass so i'm hoping that even with the new membership that i can able be able to come back out to disneyland that i could also have first dibs as well to try to get the, my hands on the new membership <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely now you did mention something that i found was kind of interesting like and you're right we're much more concentrated congested here in california do you think it's time we start looking for a third part to spread out a little bit? I think that would give Disney the, the perfect, I don't want to use the word excuse. I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say opportunity. That would give Disney the best opportunity to say, if we were considering on doing a third gate anyway, to now stretch all those people, to stretch all these locals with the, the, park pass with the reservation with the new membership canceling the regular annual pass system i think a third gate now is probably more essential than ever before right to, to try now to to fit all these people in yeah yeah it, it might be it might come down i mean we might need that but we'll see you know we'll see it's gonna be very interesting i'm i'm so curious what Wait, they're gonna do i remember do. you mentioned before when you said um during a previous segment where they you said that uh, marvel has now the avengers campus at dca well that right. kind of shot the theory that that was going to be the third gate because i actually thought the third gate was going to be a marvel park Right. And I actually thought like, I actually thought it'd be really cool. And this was like years ago before they announced, you know, Galaxy's Edge and Avengers Campus. I thought it'd be really cool if the third gate was like a Heroes and Legends park where you can have Star Wars and Marvel. You can even have like a Pandora and then you can throw in like some of the animated stuff like Hercules or whatever, I, like a Heroes and Legends park. Because that's a generalized theme. We could fit a lot of things in there, a lot of franchises, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but now I don't know if that would even be worth it because you have all these lands already represented, you know? Yep. 
I mean, the best thing that I can think of right now is what I've been saying for years and years, and I'm waiting for Disney to do it. We need a villains park. Might as well do it there. Yeah. Yeah, do a villain's park. That'd be fantastic. Oh my gosh, that'd be great. And you can have it almost like a dark magic kingdom. Yes, yeah, yes. set it up like a magic kingdom, but it's like a, that twisted, like, you know, vibe to it. It'd be very cool. And instead of being Cinderella's castle, you have Maleficent's castle in the Forbidden Mountain, you know, right there in the center. Oh, I would I would love that. That's been a rumor, man. I've been because I've been part of the Disney online community, I would say since like 97 or 98 from the AOL days. And the, the, the dial up days. The <laughs> dial up days, yes. And and even back then, that was a rumor of Disneyland, another gate having this like villain park it's been a rumor for so long and i it's something that i would absolutely love if they did it yeah i disney you're listening we know you are let's let's make it happen third day for the disneyland resort let's make it villains yeah there you go there you go it could do so much with that you know it'd be, it, would, it would be pretty cool it would be pretty cool but you know what though i mean to be completely honest with you I think for the time being, um, and I'm not saying forever, you know, I mean, these things ebb and flow, but I think for the foreseeable future, maybe the next five years, the parks, whether it's Disneyland Resort or whether it's Walt Disney World Resort, the parks in general, I'm not even going to speak on the international parks because they're kind of a different animal because they're owned by, you know, different companies and stuff like that too. But our parks are going to take a back burner for the next five years or so. And Disney Plus and the streaming stuff is going to be top priority for Disney. So we'll get stuff. They're not going to completely abandon us, but we're definitely going to take a back seat with the parks for a while. Yeah. And that's why I had mentioned, I wish that they would just finish Tron finish Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, open Ratatouille, finish off Epcot, open everything up at once, the Star Wars Star Cruiser, open up everything at once for the 50th and just let it run. Right. Build up that revenue. Don't have nothing else more coming out for, as you said, like maybe four or five, six years. And then all that revenue, build it back up and then run with it. Do something else. Add something right. more. Well, it's cl it's uh, it's clear that Chapek or Demara, whoever the powers that be, um, are like you said, they're stretching it out. They're trying to spread it over as many fiscal periods as they can yes. to kind of spread out the cost, which is surprising to me. Because, like we talked about, I mean, it, it's I would think it's already paid for, but I don't know. It's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It really is. It's like when you think you know something and you know how it's going to go, Disney <laughs> surprises us all, whether it's whether we like it, whether we don't, or it's like a complete. Uh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, do you think they're going to because it was like we talked to you, we had a lot of conversations about this and everything, but do you think they're going to. Um, do you think Disney is still going to sue California for the stuff or do you think that that ship has sailed? What are your feelings on that? I was curious. I think me personally, I think they're still waiting to really see, you know, what's going to go on. Like after, like with everything, now that the, the vaccination is out and people are getting it, you know, maybe Disney's waiting in the wings, you know, cause now they're using the Disneyland resort as a vaccination station. Right. right. They're like, they're like, you know what, we can't open the parks for this. Maybe that was Disney's way of saying, Hey, we're supporting you. We're getting the people what they need. So if we help out, can you throw us a bone here? Can we right. open Can we open up, you know? Yeah, yeah, Disney's definitely playing long game here. Like like you said, the vaccination center, they've eased off. You don't see like that heat they're, they're directing at, the, at, at Newsom anymore. They've, they've backed off. They, they even started a campaign with the Incredibles to wear your mask, social distance. Mm -hmm. There's something going on behind the scenes where... And I don't know this for sure, but my guess from what I'm gathering that Disney's working with the state government where they're saying, hey, look, we'll play ball with you right now. OK, but when we reopen, we're going to want a lot of tax breaks. We're going to want a lot of this. We're going to want a lot yeah. of that. So yeah. we'll play ball now. But when we reopen, you, you better help us out. Yeah, I, I have a feeling something like that is going on behind the scenes. Disney 
is too calm right now. That exactly. They, they know something, either that or, hey, they have it set up in the Toy Story parking lot. Maybe that's the new third gate vaccination land. <laughs> vaccinated vax land yeah vax exactly land. <laughs> exactly or maybe all that baby yoda that grogu merch is offsetting the closure who knows yeah <laughs> but yeah but i really do i think disney is just waiting now that they're staying quiet so if anything does arrive it's like hey you know what we did our part right we waited long more than enough more than enough you know it's it's time in the words yeah. of rafiki it's time <laughs> exactly but I want to thank you for uh, joining me today with this lengthy conversation of everything that's going on. Hopefully we'll get more news out that, you know, we could do more collabs in the near future. And hopefully we could get some good news of when Disneyland will finally reopen with the. I actually bet you that Disneyland is going to reopen with the new membership. Yeah, I think so too. Absolutely. I think they'll have that that prepped and ready to go when it, when the park opens. And maybe they'll let you buy the membership like a few weeks prior to the opening or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I think it'll I, open with that new yeah, membership. Yeah, I think once they announce what the membership is and the date when you can purchase it, that's when we'll know soon following Disneyland will be open. Yeah. 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 And, and just and just like to stay on the Lion King theme, you mentioned Rafiki. When does that open? The king has returned. Yes. He's back, baby. <laughs> well, on back, that, I think that's the best way to end it right there. <laughs> so uh, thank you again for joining me. It's uh, always a pleasure having you on. And uh, one last time, can you let uh, the listeners know where they could find you? Yes. Well, thank you, George, for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Um, you can find me on YouTube, Orange Grove 55. I do... A lot of like what George does. Um, we, I talk about the parks. I talk about the films, a lot of speculation, rumors, news, things like that. I dive into a lot of the Disney Plus streaming stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much what I do. It's Orange Grove 55 on YouTube. Awesome. And thank you everyone for joining us. And remember, stay healthy, stay safe, stay Disney. Bye everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>